Back on your tech report. Thank you for being with us each and every single week. You can always connect online. It is at your tech report on all our social media. Mitchell Whitfield, how are you feeling? I'm feeling bright and chipper and like a young rising star. I wanted to talk about something <laughs> um, topical and interesting and emergency. Well, shouldn't, shouldn't, that be the, shouldn't that be the baseline, though, Mark? Really? I mean, you <laughs> no. mean as opposed to the regular hot garbage we normally talk about? I mean, <laughs> I, excuse me? I resemble that's, that comment. Well, that's my point. All right, go ahead. Go ahead. You look good, um, by the way. Yeah. You, uh, thank you. Uh, you're you're in Los Angeles. You are uh, not terribly far from raging fires. Yep, which, this is true. Surprisingly, um, you turn on CNN and they're not even talking about it anymore. Yeah, is that just because it's just so common at this point? Like, I don't understand why that. New, I know, I know there was an election and, and inauguration and stuff. That... I I, th- I think that had sort of taken the uh, a little bit of the mind share of the American people. A new president, uh, okay, is inaugurated and everything. But and it also when something. When something tragic and bad happens, yeah. uh, obviously your attention goes to that. But I think even that, even something as bad as the wildfires here, when it's been going on for not days, but weeks now. Yeah. And now three days ago, we had... Another one start. No, no, another two start. Oh, two, two. Um, I think, the, I think wow. those have gotten a little less attention. I think, not that they've gotten less attention, especially everyone's aware of them here. Yeah. But I think we're in better shape now with the new fires because there were so many wonderful men and women from other states and other countries yeah. that came here to fight the wildfires that we hear that already existed, that we were in a better position with better person power to fight these new fires because there were so many people here fighting the existing ones. Does that make sense? It, so it I makes, think there, it makes there, sense. I just don't. It's. You know, as someone who has friends in that area, right? Yeah. Like you, I check yeah. in all the time. No, I know I've, you've been great about it. Yeah. Uh, you know, I turn on the news and suddenly it's not even mentioned. Like I have to go online and dig to get the information. I'm sure that the news cycle, obviously, where you are is very different. It is. But it's, it's still, it's, yeah. It's hard for me. Like, and I was confused. I'm like, why are we suddenly not <sighs> talking about this from one day to another? I mean, sadly, I think it's a little bit of the world goes on syndrome, which I, I get it, it. not to be insensitive. Yeah. I mean, I'm sensitive to because I live here. Of course. But I think because it's been happening for this long and because other things have come up, it's a little bit it's a little bit of that. And uh, it's understandable. But for anyone that has people here that is here, you know, obviously my heart, I, I have friends that have lost homes. Yeah. I know. Um, so my heart goes out to everyone here and anything that people can do to help, whether it's financially, uh, whether if you're in the area, taking people in. Um, helping your friends, helping people you don't know. I mean, yeah. it's just, it, it's been incredible, incredible in not a good way, but you know, it's, uh, you know, we will get through it. We will get now, through it. Obviously our thoughts and prayers with everybody who's affected and there's so many ways you can donate, but Absolutely. I wanted to talk about emergency preparedness, you know, yeah. and in 2025 now, thanks to technology and innovation, We've got things like backup batteries. We've got things like, you know, uh, the good things and the bad things, like those people driving electric cars can't find infrastructure to charge that stuff. I mean, how has it been for you with this being top of mind about this could literally hit my backyard, right? You know, yeah. it's not close to it at this point, thankfully. Um but what are those things that you have done over your lifetime in the California area, in the Los Angeles area, from the tech perspective that has allowed you to prepare a little bit better for this, or at least maybe ease your mind a little bit. Okay. At least no, if we got to go, is there anything? That's a, that's a great question. I think we go from most basic to uh, maybe the things that not everyone thinks about most basic is obviously your cell phone. Um, okay. Just you talk about technology and advancements, just the fact that we now have early warning systems that are baked in to every operating system, whether you choose to yeah. opt in or not yeah. um, just those warning, those alerts, uh, being current on the uh, being current on the apps that can help you in every way uh for uh, what is it uh, duty watch or watch duty i'm trying to now the app is going to escape me i'm looking at my phone right now i've been looking at it every day and, and of then course, there are I also can't... apps and services actually more services yes. watch duty watch, watch duty, duty which has which has the everyone has been downloading this if they didn't have it already yeah. in this area which shows you in real time the fires the what what level in terms of evacuation what you know what level you were at for it you be alerted, uh, you get ready to go, get the hell out of there. Um, where the fire is spreading, directions, emergency services in your area. So we're talking about basic things that people need to have. Obviously, a cell phone, the apps that are now, you, like I said, warnings are baked in, <clears throat> but apps like Watch Duty for Fires that tell you in real time where everything is, what yeah. sort of danger you may or may not be in, 
uh, what we're the path of the fire, things like that. And you mentioned it, another basic thing, ways to keep your devices charged. Um, I have large uh, electric backup in the house. Um, so I have multiple batteries that I use to connect to different things. We have large batteries that will run the fridge in the garage for three days. God like the forbid. anchor stuff, like the ones the, you can buy almost on Amazon, right? C- correct. But these are these are the like uh, ever heavy duty uh, ones. Yeah, yeah, heavy heavy duty ones that are made by DJI Anchor. A lot of companies make them. Yeah. Um. That uh, I mean, huge batteries that look like larger than a car battery that will that will power appliances if you need to. Um. And in fact, I've been looking into, and it's funny that you mentioned Anchor Mark because for me. For a long time now, and we have to figure out why this is happening, I've been looking for whole home battery backup. Now, for people that have uh, a solar system, they're thinking, huh, we all have this. If you have solar, the solar energy during the day like comes the into your house. Like the Tesla Powerwall or the like Power, the solar. Powerwall, yeah, okay. LG makes them. Yeah. There are different companies that make them for solar. And what happens is when you're, repro- when you're producing energy using the panels on your roof, obviously it goes to your house. But during the day, when you're producing a lot of energy because the sun is up during the day, obviously, any of the excess that you're not using gets stored in the battery to be repurposed later. Once you fill up those batteries to be used at night when you don't have the sun, uh, anything extra goes back to the grid. And that's how you make money or actually sort of, you know, manage your uh, manage your bills even better by selling back to the grid and mitigating whatever you whatever little pittance you are paying on a monthly basis. You're, you're to whatever so far your company ahead. Is. You're so far ahead, by the way, because. This is really this this I think this started as more of like a southern state type thing because right, of right. obviously sun and, and weather. We're kind of slowly making its way up to Canada. <laughs> like I I know friends that lived in in like the Philadelphia area that are kind of just getting into it. And I think there's things to consider like heat dissipation on the panels and snow and stuff like that. So you're you're so ahead of the game now. That that being said, you, so you're you're looking for but, a, just a battery solution, right? But, but yeah, so so get this. And I think we've talked about this a little bit, but I can't understand why this really doesn't exist. The only company I know that's about that's to solve the problem that I'm about to tell you exists is Anchor. Okay, so okay. we'll get that's in, the, in a long way. We're getting to anchor and how their technology has sort of stepped up to fill a gap where something didn't exist, which is really cool. So you have these whole home batteries that are really designed to power you. Number one, when the sun goes down, so you're not spending money from the grid. You're just spending energy that you've produced and saved and stored in these batteries. Or if there's a power outage, you have a very clean, silent way to give yourself back a power from these batteries. If there's a power outage, a lot of people yeah. use these um, Ener- Enerjack, what are they? Uh, the Ener- the um, backup, uh, I think you Oh, have like one. a Generac generator. Gener- Generac, Generac them, I said Enerjack. Like Generac, makes- yes. Listen, I've got one, but it's super loud. Right. Like my and, neighbors and, are not happy runs- when it's on. Right. And it also it runs on either gas or propane. Correct. Which if in California can be a problem if the earthquake is what caused your outage because you're supposed to cut off gas lines. You know, yeah, you, you could have true. a propane. Pa- t- it's just it's a great solution. But if you want something clean and silent, uh, the, these you know, electric solutions, these great batteries are a great solution. So my thought was, well, I'm not really ready to use solar. I did the math. And for me. In my area, the math didn't work out, and that's another conversation for another show. Like the installation versus the... Or or if you own your home, you're better off owning the solution that you have on your roof because if you sell your home and you don't own the equipment on it, that becomes a thing where, okay, so the next person either has to sign up for that service or get rid of the equipment. Okay. So now it's a pop. It's a thing of like, do I buy it or and is the cost worth it over the long term? Yeah. We're getting the ecological footprint, which is always a better thing. The financial thing is also part of the equation. So I thought to myself, you know what? I would just like to have the batteries for right now as a backup instead of a traditional propane or natural gas generator. Th- something goes out, it's quiet. I have backup for a couple of days. Usually, it power only goes out for a few hours when it does. Okay, but in the, God forbid something goes out for days. I'd like to have that. Well, you call up a lot of these companies like, well, do you want a solar system? No, then we can't sell you a battery. Why? Why would you want it? And I explain to them <laughs> and I explain to them as a backup solution from my house in the event of an emergency, it's quiet. How would you charge it? Um, late at night when electricity is its cheapest, I felt like I was telling a children's story to these people. Yeah. Late at night when the when it's pennies on the dollar for your electricity, because everyone knows the most expensive electricity is when people get home after work from like five to nine at night. That's the most expensive electricity. Yeah. But you could charge this thing up at two in the morning. You could tell it when to charge. It charges up at night between two and five a.m., whatever it is, and then it's stored. You have that electricity stored. If power goes out, you're powering your house with that battery wall using cheap electricity that you paid for late at night. And they're like, oh, yeah, that's a good idea. I'm like, yeah. Will you sell me the battery? No, not unless you get the solar. They love the idea, but they wouldn't do it. Anchor has stepped up. 
And now they have these whole home solutions, which are genius. They have a, it, it isn't called Anchor. It's a separate line. We should, you know what? Will you look it up while I tell this little story here? Is it the so Anchor it, Solix now? Uh, yes. Thank you, okay. Solix. There you go. So they make two different solutions. Both of them can and both of them involve giving you basically a, a new electrical grid at, on your home. They give you a new panel, a new electrical panel, and you could do one of two things. You could have these giant batteries that actually almost have their own little cart. They have little wheels on them. In the event of an emergency, yes. power goes out. You roll that cart up to the panel on your house. It has a proprietary plug. You plug it in. Boom. Your house is ready to go. If you want to spend a little more money, they have a Solix solution that looks like a power wall that you can add to modularly. You can add as many batteries to this stack as you need to power your home, whatever your needs are. And that is already plugged in to your panel, much like your generator is. So when power goes out, <clears throat> I think in under 20 milliseconds, Mark, seamlessly cuts in, boom. I'm losing my voice. I'm getting so crazy. <clears throat> so, <laughs> so excited. Mr. That way, I'm sorry, so crazy and excited. Let <clears throat> me get some water here. But that is the, that is the idea. Yeah, it makes and sense. Anchor is actually filling this gap where other companies will only do it if you buy solar from them. Anchor's like, forget this. Some people just want an electric battery wall yeah, it's amazing. as a backup solution, which seems kind of genius because you can charge it on the cheap late at night. Yeah. Sure, if you have solar and you're lucky enough to have that or you you, you bought that, yeah, it's natural. It's a natural solution. If you don't have solar, go over to Anchor, start looking at their Solix. I believe they're throughout North America. I think you were telling me about it. It's in yeah, Canada. You can get them. I have a friend who did it, did it here in Canada. Like, that's what they did. So that's Ryan the solution did that, correct? Yeah, Ryan took Ryan care did of it. That, yeah. And, and you can even, they're modular. Like, you can add on to them. Like, that's if you what need I'm more. Saying. Yeah. Depending on your needs, you can add to this. You can, it's like a stack. But the outside of it looks like this clean Tesla wall or LG power wall. Yeah. And uh, so. That's something that I'm really looking at. It's a long way of getting to answering your question. That's something that to <laughs> me is a huge win because in times like this, especially when there, you know, there are fires, I know batteries are flammable, but having any sort of exposed propane tank or, yeah, exactly. under, or if, you're, if you're running through a gas line that may be compromised that in many you know, natural disasters need to be turned off, having this power wall or having something similar, hey, I, I feel like I'm in a great situation just because I have these other batteries that i can plug into my you know in the garage i plug the you know the refrigerator into we have one uh, almost like um what are, what are the solutions that we that you have in that everyone has like their computer attached to if the if power goes out oh ups the, like a, a backup battery it's a backup yes UPS. yes this is like yeah, that on steroids so i have it set up right now that at least my internet will run for the day if you know, I have one. Your I have one of my Your internet's fine. Though. One of my routers, yeah. So I can hear how the world ends. <laughs> so I can hear oh, on radio, wow. on public radio, right? So, to me, having those and, and and of course the basic, you look at apps and and how phones can help us in many yeah. ways that make sense. You know, we had to put together like very quickly a list of everything that we needed to get together. Mm -hmm. So I had my notes app. Uh, working in conjunction with a couple of other things. I had things, you know, suitcases ready to go, a list of priorities of what we need to take to get out because it makes you think very, it makes you realize very quickly what's important to you. Well, and I remember I asked the, you this, right, when I first asked, yeah. like, what would you grab? And we were talking about it here. And listen, in, in Montreal, where I am, the, you know, we get snow, we get rain, we get flooding, like it happens. But we don't get, like, obviously the, the fear of wildfires has not happened here, knock on wood. Um, right. Natural disasters, few and far between. But you, it gets your mind going. Like, what would we grab? And my wife is like, well, the dog and the kids. I'm like, you know, I oh, get yeah, that. basics, yeah. You know, but we have like an area where the passports are and the jewelry is that maybe I'd grab that. And, and you know, I don't care about my equipment. I'd probably grab a computer if I remembered to grab it. But that's, I mean, when your life is on the line, like really the, the little things aren't aren't the important things. No. But it's definitely something that it, that gets your mind racing in that direction. And I think it's actually good to have those thoughts sometimes, even it if is. they come from a negative place. And it does, it does really make you realize, like if people think about things that are irreplaceable, memory, very, very few things are irreplaceable. There are, you know, like pictures that that's why we always tell people, and we talked about it on the show. If you can, if you can afford it and if you could do it, and it's not expensive, but I don't, you know, profess to know what people can or can't do, even if it's a few bucks a month. And for the most part, we're talking a few bucks a month uh, at the most to pay for a cloud solution that maybe doesn't come standard with your Google or, you know, with yeah. your Android or iPhone. Okay. Because those pictures that you take or that have you either with a camera that you store in your photo app or with your phone that naturally gets stored in your photo app, that goes up to the cloud. You never have to worry. Oh my God, we're all of our, our pictures, which are a big thing for people to, you know, save their memories. Pictures are huge like that. 
Um, there aren't that many other things you, you know, every, I suggest replace. everyone has, yeah. huh? Yeah, you yeah, can't replace. Yeah, the unreplaceable things. I, I suggest everyone has a fireproof bag or box in which they keep their important documents. Yeah, of course. Social security cards, passports, licenses, marriage licenses, things that are documents that are irreplaceable. Have a firebox, yeah. or in this case, a fire bag. They've gotten very cheap, and the technology in those has gotten very good over the years. Have a fire bag that you keep those documents or important things in. Yeah. But then make a quick list. I realize with all the collectibles and things that I have, you've been to my house. I have different collections, whether it's my baseball cards or my my figures, my action figures that I have, my hot toys. So I have stuff that I co- – board game collection. Um, document that. Use your technology. Use your DJI camera. Uh, use your Osmo Pocket. Use your phone to document for insurance purposes. Yeah, you're right. Everything totally. in your house. And I hadn't done that, Mark, until we got the notification of possible evacuation. I grabbed my my Osmo Pocket that my brother got me for my 60th. Yeah, I'm that old. And I start. I did a down and dirty six minute video. Just a I should watch it. Uh, it was more of a run through because we were yeah, sort yeah. of like distressed at that point. And I'm like, okay, this is what I got. This is really down and dirty. And I'm narrating it. I have to go back and watch it. I'll probably laugh my ass off because it's yeah, ridiculous. But I tried to do the best that I could. But these are ways. And this is a great thing to bring up, by the way. That you can use technologies in the to be not only if disaster hits, but to be better prepared for if something happens. These are all things on the technology side: backup batteries, fire bags, cameras, yeah. cloud storage, things that you know you're like ah we take technology for granted because it helps our everyday life, but they can be used in really positive ways to be prepared for the unforeseen, like these wildfires in California. Although they happen twice a year at this point. I, I really don't know. And again, I'm not a political, I'm not, this isn't a political show, but I can't imagine we haven't figured out a way to spend maybe a billion dollars a year to prevent these fires, whether it's controlled burns, that, or controlled you know what? drops, rather than spend hundreds of billions to fix it. And then the unfixable, the loss of lives that you can't throw money at. So I, you have to, somebody has I to explain have to me why. Conversation. Yeah, I think I want to have ridiculous. a deeper, a deeper yeah. dive into that because infrastructure people and leaving. stuff, it's 2025. And like people are leaving the state because of it. Yeah. yeah, and I. Crazy. This is the first time I had a genuine conversation with my wife about. I think we may be thinking about getting out of here at some point, and not because stuff happens. We know stuff happens, but stuff that can be prevented happening constantly. Yeah. So I mean, well, you know, that's another rant for another day. Crazy. Okay, we're going to take a quick break. We're going to come back. I'm going to introduce you to a really cool guy um, from a company called Ultra Human, who make a smart ring with a twist. Stick around. This is your tech report. <laughs> 